Porterville from Redback to talk about the Gen 2. Is that what you like to call it? The Gen 2? Uh, calling it the SH5000, but How about it is a second generation uh, Redback inverter. So, the commonly called the Gen 2, but a SH5000 yep. uh, inverter, and some of the new features which kind of make it really sweet to install. So, I'll just uh, get Paul to talk us through it, and then I'll ask him a few questions. Yep. So Paul, just walk us through what's in the box, these new the balancer system set up. Okay, sure. So the main difference between this generation of the inverter and the previous one is that the balancing systems box is now actually separated from the inverter compartment. And uh, that uh, makes installation simpler, um, warranty returns uh, also simpler if you have to just remove the inverter piece if there's an issue with the unit. And also um, enables us to include the PV isolator um, directly in the balancing systems kit, so you don't have to mount an external isolator. So let me just run through that again. We now have the ability to detach the power module, which is the top unit up here. Yeah. Uh, is there something to stop it just being pulled off? Yeah, certainly. So there's a pin here that holds the connector in place. Uh -huh. um, and that pin is only accessible when the front cover is turned off. Okay, is, so the front is, cover uh, has to removed. come off. And to remove the front cover, you have to put the isolator into the open position so that there's no uh, DC running. So the isolator itself has got a mechanical interlocking with the cover. That's correct. So it has to be in the off position, which it is now. So, so this is the off position, this is the on position. Yeah, and that would lock it in. So we turn it in the off position. We we can now take the cover off. Yep. Pull we, off the pin. We can pull out the safety pin. And then you'll disconnect the comms cables. Yes. And then push the inverter up and move it. Right. And so for replacement of the power module now, you've got full isolation of DC. You can isolate the AC as you would normally do. Yep. Um, and it makes it for a very sweet install. Yeah, it should be much, uh, much more straightforward than in the past. So I can see this being one of the fastest inverters to install. We certainly hope so, and uh, I think we'll be running some contests later in the year to see just how fast it can be installed. Oh, great. So let's look down below the unit. So what do we got in the battery module there? So the new battery enclosure um, has a, a few um, variations from the previous model. It will now hold the uh, LG M48 batteries, um, which are 3.3 kilowatt hours, and it can hold four of those. Um, so, so can you say the specs again? The 3.3 kilowatt hour battery. So you can put four 3.3 kilowatt hour batteries. Alright, so the sums, 12.6. 13.2. 13.2. Yeah, 13.2 kilowatt hours uh, in the, it's a slightly larger battery compartment than the previous version. Yeah, slightly larger, a little deeper to fit those batteries. You can also still put four of the Pylon Tech uh, 2000 uh, B or B plus batteries in here. So. Yeah, so it's a little deeper, a little taller, but more or less uh, looks the same. And it will take Pylon Tech US 2000 Bs as well as the uh, LG Chem. And they, both of those batteries use this connector here for connection. So oh, the lovely Amphenol connectors. Mm -hmm. They are one of my favourites with the locking mechanism on the side yeah. so you can pull them off. And so, um, and because they're both compatible, um, the Amphenols are compatible with both batteries, there's no wiring change required um, irrespective, of, irrespective of whichever battery you need. Yep. Um, and the other thing that's changed is the fan controller board in here is now also um, connected to the, um, the, the comms unit which enables us to monitor temperature inside the battery cabinet um, directly um, and on the portal and, and control the, uh, the fans uh, using that, that temperature reading. Okay, let's just focus in a little bit on the uh, other control switches in here. I noticed there's uh, some relays. What are these about? So the relays here are used for load control. So if you wish to um, control some of the dumb loads we call in your house, for example a pool pump or a hot water system, then uh, you can wire those to these relays and um, you can then schedule them to run inside the solar window or turn them on and off manually uh, and so on. The other change that we've made in here is added two, um, two new meters that give us 1% uh, accuracy in the readings so that we can do a better job of providing really accurate data about energy consumption. Oh, cool. And the Ouija board, interestingly named. <laughs> yes. What's this little device? So the Ouija board is the uh, communications brain um, of the device. 
and its uh, its function is to talk to the, the the cloud platform that we use for doing data analytics and uh, machine learning, and um, its other function is to control the schedules of the device, uh, manage the battery communications, um, and also talk to the inverter and tell the inverter what it needs to be doing. Cool. And lastly, what's the, the raw specs of the uh, the hybrid setup? So this inverter is a five kilowatt uh, nominal. Um, Inverter with 4.6 kilowatt charge and discharge. It's um, a symmetrical to charge and discharge. It is, yeah. So, well, it's uh, symmetrical power. Obviously, yep. the current's different because the voltage is different. Yep. So, it'll be uh, 85 amps on charge and 100 amps on discharge. 100 amps, yep. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, the backup uh, is uh, UPS. Uh, level backup, so you would put your refrigerator and lighting and other critical circuits on that, um, and that will do an automatic changeover in sub cycle, so your computer wouldn't go off, for example, if you lost power. Um, and uh, yeah, those are the those are the main functions of it. I notice you also have a, a, a little bypass switch here. What's that for? That's correct. That's in case um, there's a problem with the inverter. Um, the bypass switch allows you. Uh, to connect the backup circuits, so your critical circuits directly to the main supply um, if there was uh, an issue with the inverter top box and you had to replace it. So if you were waiting a few days for an installer to come and make that, that change, then you could just push the backup into the bypass, uh, the bypass switch into the bypass position um, and the backup loads will be connected directly uh, to the grid. Well, that's a great thing. You'd have to rewire the switchboard. Yeah, that's right. And it's kind of a tricky piece of wiring the uh, the this particular bypass switch and so well all bypass switches so it's nice to have it done in the factory so you don't have to worry about it yourself so everything I'm looking at here is it comes pre-wired that's correct all of this wiring here um, is pre-wired in the factory um, and tested on our line before it's uh, put in a box so all that's really required is to put the uh, AC supply in and then take the backup supply out and uh, connect up your PV and your batteries and your comps cables and uh, you're done. It's, it's like they say, plug and play mostly. Yep, um, that is the goal. right on the end there I did notice there's a little antenna, what's that for? Yeah, so that's the Wi-Fi antenna. Um, you can see the Wi-Fi dongle here um, and that's uh, yeah, just how the unit uh, will connect to your home Wi-Fi for using the app and also connect to the, the portal um, to give the, uh, the cloud access. Cool. Thanks very much, Paul. Hey, you're welcome.